As I begin tonight, first I'd like to say hello to everybody watching from home, wherever that may be. Um, we wish you could be here. They're having a great time. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you all. You know, my saying this year is, uh, Merry Christmas and a better New Year. Does that work? Good, good. Earlier this week, how many of you saw the, uh, the two planets that made that, like, oh, you did? Good, a couple of you did? Uh, it was hard, wasn't it? Yeah, it was kind of not the best weather, but um, I looked online and saw it, and it was, it was pretty spectacular. It really was. Uh, somebody showed me a picture after mass earlier tonight, and wow. It was, it was crystal clear. I don't know where they got it. Photoshop or, no. <laughs> no, they swore it was real, um, but it was just beautiful. And as the, the, the news purports it or reports it, says that this, um, the last time something like that happened when they lined up like that was about 800 years ago. And of course, we think about the star that uh, gave the wise men a clue that something big was happening, right? We think about that, that was some 2,000 years ago. Now, what was the situation when that happened? Um, historians will tell us that it wasn't really a great period in history. Things were rough, and especially there in the Middle East, <laughs> news, right? <laughs> Problems in the Middle East. But there was, uh, the Roman Empire was in existence and has, had exerted its energy and dominion over all. People were living as subjects to the empire. There was a lot of poverty. We know that Jesus was born, you know, his father was a, a, a carpenter, but he was raised very humbly, okay? There was a lot of stuff that was going on. There was. If, I know it's hard to believe, but in the political realm, there were issues. There were leaders who were proud and selfish and greedy. There were wars. Does any of this sound familiar? Isn't it something that that light was this week? on the shortest day of the year, right? Or darn close to it. When we're at our darkest, and we were given this light, something completely out of the ordinary. And I, I, I don't wanna make more of it than what it is, but I do think of possibilities. The past nine or 10 months, how, how you doing? It's been tough. What are your conversations been? A lot of them saying, oh, I can't wait to get out of this year. Thank goodness there's a vaccine, everything. I just want to get back to normal. Yeah, because we never complained been before when there was normal, right? <laughs> everything was great. But we long for that. We want to get, we want to get to a point where we, where we feel like we're grounded and we know where we're going. A am I right? You know, since this has all been going on, since March, I guess, I, I think I felt my limitations more in these nine months. And um, one of the areas that I have felt is that all throughout this, I know that people were looking at times for me to know the right thing to say or to explain it so we all get it. And guess what? <laughs> I'm clueless. No, I struggled with that. I struggled with that a lot and wondering, well, <laughs> how do we do this? How do we give comfort to our people? How do we find a way out of the dark? You know, a couple of weeks ago, I celebrated my, uh, my anniversary of ordination. And you know what we sang 
at the ordination mass, I almost said coronation, sorry. No, at, <laughs> that's later. Um, at the ordination mass, it was December 2nd. It was right at the beginning of Advent. And our opening song was out of darkness. God has called us, called us to be his holy people and to walk in his light. I got thinking about that a lot. And I've been praying about that all through this nine months that we have been in the situation we find ourselves. And that idea, that concept, that reality of being called from darkness into God's own light has just hit me over and over again. And I think it's a message that all of us really need to hear. You know, we talk about that, I mentioned that, that bunching of those two stars. Can two make a bunch? Anyway, the two, the two planets got together and made like a, a big star. And it was a light that I think, I know for me, that it gave me some hope. Now, the wise men, all those years ago, they saw this anomaly in the sky. They saw this light, this star. And it was, the, it was faith that enabled them to leave where they were and make this long journey to find out what it was. And they started to put pieces together. And that this was a sign that Creator had provided for them. And of course, we know the rest of the story, how they made their way, and then they found as unexpected as could be, this little babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, right? And they came to do him homage. And um, where is the light today? Where, where is that force? I don't know whether force, where is that, uh, where's that energy? Where is that presence? that is for us what we need to bring us out of the dark, to change our, our, our frustration into, into hope. Where is it? And, and how do we find it? And what will it do when we do find it? And when we do see it? You see, uh, a number of us did try to see those planets earlier in the week but there was an obstacle, the weather, it wasn't so good. Or maybe we forgot and then it became too late to go look, whatever it was. But doesn't that happen in our own lives? That so many times, what is right in front of us, we don't see. What I'm talking about here, folks, is the source of our life is God. God created us and all that we know that is wonderful and beautiful in the world. God called us out of the darkness of the abyss and brought us into this world that he created. He gave us life, he supports us in this life and he welcomes us into his. And what did we do? We messed it up. Uh, not any of you, right? We do it all the time. We mess it up because it, because it's not real enough for a lot of us, or we haven't allowed it to be real enough. A lot of times we go through the motions. Yeah, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace. Yeah. We go through those motions, and we forget that. The reason we do all of this stuff is because there is someone who is real. He came to us in a real way so that we could get it. That's what we celebrate here tonight, tomorrow. That God loved us so much that he sent his only son to us as a little baby, someone that we could relate to, someone that we could ooh and ah and look at the way we look at our little children, don't we? We look at them and we love them. And then they grow up. And we love them. 
And the relationship that we have with them changes as much as it stays the same. There's times when we're so close, you couldn't, you couldn't, couldn't just put a slip of paper between us. And there's other times where we don't even want to see each other. The reality of this relationship that we have with God is that at times we believe with everything that we are, and then there's other times that we struggle with that. When we let ourselves not pay attention to that relationship, when we allow ourselves to get lazy. The message of Christmas is for us to realize what we have, that God gave himself to us and for us so that we would have life and have it to the full. God came for us to show us how we can fix up the messes that we make with his grace, with his love, with his mercy, with his forgiveness. God came to shine his light into the darkness. Yeah, the darkness out there, but sometimes the darkness in here, when we're not being honest with ourselves, when we're not being true. The light of Christ dispels the darkness. The light of Christ helps us to get our house together. It helps us to get our lives together. And it enables us, like the wise men all those years ago, to be able to step out in faith and to go where he leads us. I think you'll agree, as I started this, that the world is in need of light because there's a lot of darkness out there. Oh, it's glitzy and it's shiny and it's sloganed out like crazy. But the world needs grounding. You know, I said to you earlier that at times I, we feel like we're, we're not on firm ground. And actually through this, I've used that expression a lot of times that the, the plates keep on shifting right? The one thing that hasn't changed, and it's what the light of the world gave birth to, and that's this thing that we call church, that we call us, the people of God. Christ breathed his life. He said to Peter, Peter, I need you. You're the rock, and I'm going to build my church on you, and the powers of hell shall not prevail against it. It was the light that called a sinner, Peter, called him and put him in charge, knowing that he was listening to God. Folks, for you and me, when we get lost, when we get feeling like we're on shaky ground, the way to rectify that is to plant ourselves firmly in Christ. And the way we do that, do you know the way? It's prayer. It's prayer. And what is prayer? Prayer is our realizing that we're in a relationship with someone who is greater than us that doesn't make us feel bad about being not as good as him. Boy, that was clear, wasn't it? Prayer is our realizing that we are in relationship with God and we're not God, but he loves us just the same. Prayer is our communication with that God where we, where we give it all. We say, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We adore you. Oh, come let us adore him, right? And by the way, <laughs> you know what's going on. I need some help. That's all good. That's all good because we humble ourselves before our God and we allow his light to shine on us. We allow that star of Bethlehem to be just as real today as it was 2,000 years ago. That we allow the love of that little baby to be reality in our hearts and our souls. That's how we do it. And that's how we're going to find our way through this pandemic and through whatever 
we have to do to get to wherever we got to get. You know, the, like normal again. I would much rather say, let's get back to being better than where we were before. Okay? So, my friends, on this windy, now rainy night, think about that star. Think about that light. Think about Jesus Christ. And let him be the light of your life.